What's going on everybody, Jenmin here. Not only is this the mid-year room tour kicking off June of 2022, but it's the last room tour in this house. And that's so crazy to think about, man. I started the channel here. This is the only place that you guys have ever really seen. And before I start taking everything down, as we're getting ready to move, I figured I'd do one last room tour. So we're gonna get to see the collection in its final form, kind of purged down a little bit until we move into the new place with a lot more space. Before we look at everything, I want to thank that Spider-Man booth for sponsoring this video. If you're not, make sure to follow them over on Whatnot for live daily comic book auctions. You can win some CGC key issues or get some dope exclusive variants by Street Level Hero, their sister site. If you haven't, you can download Whatnot using the link in the description. It'll give you a $10 credit that you can use towards your first purchase. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And let's jump into this tour. All right, guys, going up the stairs, everything is pretty much the same. The posters with the cards. You guys have seen this stuff all before. But moving up to the love. We've got the wood piece from Brian Cochran here. And here we have some books, some spillover. We got some Berserk. We got my TMNT stuff, which goes from the Mirage days to the Archie uh, cartoon days and the current IDW series. A bunch of displays and posters that I haven't been able to do anything with yet. And got a couple of the life-size busts out here. So the new Spider-Man and the most recent Deadpool life-size bust from Sideshow. And again, just more canvases and little posters and stuff. All right, moving over to the arcade loft. So got some DC light up, hang up things. I forget who sent it to us. They were licensed and everything. We did it in a what's in the box. Moving down over here. So the arcade loft. My favorite one is probably still the old school Mortal Kombat 2 one. But uh, just run through them real quick. So we got the Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, next to the Marvel Superheroes. The Deluxe one. It's got the updated buttons and graphic then we have uh killer instinct again got the stool here the most recent mortal kombat legacy cab with the mortal kombat 3 skin and i just pre-ordered the mk1 skin so that'll complete my uh mk arcade trilogy then we got the street fighter legacy edition again probably not going to make this move probably going to put it on marketplace or something i don't really need that one uh if I have Big Blue, it's not like MK to me where I would rather have the three different ones or whatever. OG TMNT, the only one that I have that still doesn't have a light up marquee, but it's all good. Been tempted to also get the Turtles in Time one, but it doesn't seem really worth it to double dip for me. Got NBA Jam. I don't think I'm going to upgrade to the Shaq one either because, you know, honestly, I don't even play these as much as I would like to. I don't have enough time. Hopefully in the new house, I'll play them more, but that's kind of what I said when I set this loft up, uh, then of course we have the Simpsons here. Fun game with the bowling, arcade nostalgia. So that's the arcade loft. We do have one more arcade one up, and that's gonna be in the main room here. So let's go in and take a quick look-see, and then we'll get into some detail. But sticking with the arcade one up, we have the X-Men arcade one up. It also comes with the Avengers and some terrible <laughs> Marvel fighting game from back in the day, Galactic Storm or something like that. But I had this one because I felt like it fit with the motif in this room with all the omnibus here and all the statues and everything. So let's take a quick look at the books and then we'll look at the statues. So in preparation for this move, I also downsized the book collection by a lot. Like for the DC side here, I got rid of a lot of compilation books. I got rid of a lot of characters that I really didn't have interest in. Uh, have some miscellaneous stuff on the bottom right now, but uh, try to keep it for like stuff I really want to read or stuff that I've read that's classic material. Like I'm gonna keep Batman Nightfall, even though I've read the three Omnis and did a review on them. So that's how I'm trying to approach the collection. You know, I started running out of space and even though we're gonna get more space, I don't want to go ahead and fill that up right away. So you can kind of see what I kept. Trying to keep it with the essentials and not just a lot of filler stuff. So, ended up getting the Sandman books in omnibus form back. 
spawn compendium. Still gonna collect those until the hard covers come out like they should. And I kind of been doing this trick. I've seen a lot of other collectors do this when uh, there's gaps. So since I have gaps now, I've been moving some of the books sideways. Same with Marvel. Got rid of a lot of stuff that I just wasn't into, man. If it, maybe it was a Golden Age book or a miscellaneous book. So really it's just all characters that I love, storylines that I think are worth collecting in this format. Swing it around here. Got the YouTube plaque. Well, the Hulk book, Spider-Man. So just to give you an idea, it's not every omnibus release so far, man. I used to be all about that if you guys remember. But uh, those are the Omnis currently reading. The Peter David Hulk. Gonna start my read through on that. Got the Jim Min turntable here. And then let's get into the statues up top. So, recently did a review for the Batman life size bus, the blue and the gray. Got the blue and gray premium format with it. Batman Who Laughs by Sideshow. These are all Sideshow. Got the Bane maquette, old school Lobo, dark side maquette. Going into Spider-Man symbiote suit. Then from XM, Spider-Man 2099. Sabretooth and Wolverine from Sideshow. Deadpool from Sideshow. Got the Turtles from PCS. Then at the end, we got Cap here with Taskmaster. So I have LED strips behind the calyx. These are Ikea calyx, by the way. So right now I have it set to light, but I like to put it on the smooth effects where it cycles through colors smoothly. All right, guys, and here is the last look at the statue collection up in this room in this house. So really quick, let's just fall back. These are Ikea PAX wardrobes. And I'll show you guys how I have it all reinforced and everything when we get up close. But let's go through what we got here first. So I, I didn't think I was gonna go all one third scale at first on here. So that's why I set up the cubes in the middle like that and these cubes on the side. But uh, it ended up becoming like a whole one third scale display besides the one fourth scale Ghost Rider who I have with Sideshow's Silver Surfer maquette there. Shout out to my man, uh, Kevin Henderson, who sent that Ghost Rider plaque. Got Nova, the exclusive there. Uh, then from PCS, we have the Transformers, Optimus and Megatron from the Generation 1. And of course, Starscream with a bunch of Turtles switch outs there. My new thing is, switch outs go back in the box. You pick one setup and you, and you use that. <laughs> Of course we have, man, one of the ultimate grails in my collection, uh, Superman, Hush, Sculpted Cape, followed by Doomsday. Of course, Cyber, uh, Superman, Hank, Hank Henshaw, is it? Or Henry Henshaw? I always get my Hanks and Henrys confused. Uh, then we have the Iron Studios Sentinel display with all the proximity pieces that are out so far, except for Scarlet Witch, I just never unboxed her. Uh, then we have the Sideshow maquette, uh, Sentinel maquette in the middle. And for right now, I never really had a permanent piece for this spot. We got the Sideshow Hulk versus Hulkbuster maquette. It's not a permanent spot, but none of these are because we're moving, right? So uh, keeping it moving. Also loving the one-third scale stuff from Legendary Beast XM as well as PCS. So we have Thor and Cap right here, one-third scale. Then on the bottom, of course, uh, all my recent unboxings. So we have the Merciless, Nightwing, Batman in the Batcave, and the Iron Studios Joker, who unfortunately feels underscaled compared to Prime One's Hush Batman, but you know, it's different companies can't really complain too much. So like I said, these are also uh, LED strips, and I like to do my whole fading color thing. I just feel like it looks really nice. You know, I like to switch it up with uh, whatever kind of shirt I'm wearing, a color statue, and try to you know keep the background colors coordinated. So, like I said, these are PAX units. I kind of followed a tutorial from my man Bam Collectibles, but I didn't do it as thorough as he did. But the shelves need to be reinforced. This is a metal frame that's on the front and on the back. And under here, 
we used metal L brackets instead of the plastic ones that came with it. So those metal frames kind of make it impossible. I don't wanna say impossible, but it really reinforces those pack shells. And look, I have these statues on here for months. So far, so good. And they only need to last a little bit more. Oh yeah, and I always forget to show the posters, man. The posters that are on this slanted wall here above the statues and even on the back wall here. I just search eBay comic book posters, 10 to $20 posters. I don't go too crazy, but um, just to kind of give you that whole ambiance. All right guys, so now this is normally the part where we would go downstairs, take a look at the Maju case, take a look at the Berserk pieces, but I did break down the Maju case display. I decided to sell that because we're gonna go full custom shelving in the new basement. I'm already in the works, designing it, planning it. We're gonna have the whole, it's a lot of space, man. And the Berserk statues I boxed up. Now, as I was boxing them up, I did end up selling the Berserk collection, but we'll talk about that in another video.